Saving Flagler's Beaches. In 2006, there was a major erosion that threatened A1A on the south side of Flagler Beach, so they fixed it. But we deserve better than this. In 2011, only five years later, erosion just gets worse. In many cases, erosion is spectacular. This is natural erosion. But when navigational dredging began in river mouths, inlets, and harbors, it created man-made erosion. Sixty houses and all their land were lost to man-made erosion after dredging and jetties at the mouth of the Saco River in Maine. Ponce Inlet, 1968-1972. Jetties were built on each side of dredged inlet. Unprotected by the buffering zone of a healthy beach, 2004's Hurricane Jean scoured away at the beach, dunes, seawalls, until nothing was left. Beach erosion is man-made. After dredging, sand is drawn away from both sides of the inlet, depending on the wind and wave direction. In time, all the sand is gone. New Smyrna Beach, Florida, 2006. In 2006, a five-foot-high sacrificial sand berm was created along five miles of New Smyrna's eroded beach. It was paid for with $14 million of your sacrificial dollars. The berm made from spoil sand from the intercoastal waterway was intended to provide temporary erosion protection. Before the project was even completed, much of the sand had washed away. The Charleston Harbor Ship Channel is a trench 400 feet wide and 47 feet deep, begun in 1898. This is the lighthouse on Morris Island before the shipping channel was widened and deepened. Erosion caused by the dredging caused land loss to Morris Island, stranding the lighthouse 300 yards offshore. The red line shows how much of the land the island has lost. On Folly Island, groins were built in a futile attempt to hold onshore whatever sand they could catch. The groins did not work. They have since been replaced with a dredged sand beach. South of the groins, a seawall was built. After that, sand was pumped in to form a beach in front of the seawall. Within two years, two-thirds of the sand was gone. In the 1950s, the Army Corps of Engineers dredged Port Canaveral Channel, creating a ditch 14 miles long, 500 feet wide, and 27 feet deep. Before the inlet was dredged and the jetties built, the beaches were about a third of a mile wide and growing at 10 foot a year. Within two years, 30 feet of the beach width had been lost along 41 miles of shoreline. After the beach entirely disappeared, residents sued Army Corps of Engineers and won. The Corps agreed to provide dredge beaches for 50 years, but as we know, dredging causes more erosion. What's wrong with a dredge beach? Dredges destroy everything in their path, shoals, outcrops, coral reefs, and all the creatures that live in them, including sea turtles. Dredges have obliterated miles of nearshore shoals and offshore formations. These shoals were once protected our shores from the force of the storm waves that pound our now defenseless coastlines. Dredging produces pollutants that suffocate reefs and other habitats and can make the water murky for vast areas around the dredging zone. Pumped in sand smothers all the small creatures that live along the shore. Silt coats everything, ruining the habitat of young snappers, grunts, and other important fish. Even finer dredging-produced particles can clog gills, suffocating the fish. Dredge beaches erode two to eight times faster than a native sand beach. Dredge beaches are particularly prone to washout by storm-driven waves. You're never sure what fill you'll get. The core reports, given the unique coquina sediment that composes Flagler Beach, an adequate sediment source may prove difficult and costly to find. Dredge beaches are often solid and hard. Machines must be used to soften and rake them so the turtles can dig their nests. 
When the dredge beaches a road, they typically create steep escarpments turtles can't climb. Dredge beaches must be renourished again and again at huge taxpayer expense. Expecting schedule for Flagler Beach is every five years. In 2005, more than $200 million was spent on dredging projects to fill beaches in Florida alone. The same beaches are filled again and again as the unsuitable material washes back downhill into the sea. Jerry Byrne of Sustainable Shorelines Incorporated, a monitoring agency, says, Dredging nourishment projects provide a significant transfer of monies from taxpayers to the dredging industry and coastal engineers. What can be done? How do we get from serious erosion like this to a beautiful beach like this? How can you save a threatened roadway to a natural beach and dune? How does a shoreline go from this eroded mess to this wide sandy beach without expensive and environmentally disastrous dredging? This is not an advertisement. This presentation is intended to show our extensive research and why we support a one-mile project using undercurrent stabilizers to demonstrate the effectiveness in restoring Flagler's beaches. The Citizens Group Save Flagler's Beach is not associated with Holmberg Technologies Incorporated. We created this slide presentation using material and photographs from many sources and without payment of any kind. What are undercurrent stabilizers? They are custom designed geotextile fingers filled with concrete composites. They are placed at right angles to the dunes. Most of the system is submerged. The stabilizers then quickly get completely covered with sand. How do undercurrent stabilizers work? They reduce the velocity of the incoming waves much as the shoals once did. This forces them to drop the sand they carry. As the shore regenerates, natural sand flows are restored. Aren't they just groins, as the Corps and other engineers say? No. See how groins trap the sand on one side, but the beach erodes on the other side. Groins are superficial structures that needing continuous maintenance. Low profile undercurrent stabilizers slow incoming waves and currents so sand drops out all around them. Undercurrent stabilizers quickly cover themselves with sand as the beach continues to grow in width and depth. How effective are they? Patented undercurrent stabilizers have never failed. They have evolved into highly sophisticated and precise beach building tools used for over 30 years in over 100 sites in multiple countries. Will undercurrent stabilizers work at Flagler Beach? Since the 1970s, more than 100 systems have been installed in other large bodies of water around the world. Every single system has been successful in restoring the natural beach and dune system. This bluff has suffered 50 years of futile anti-erosion attempts, including many failed groins, revetments, and seawalls. These were not lakefront houses. They were once 600 feet from the shore. The water here is 18 feet deep and covers more than half of the rock revetment at the base of the 70-foot cliff. Boulders in the 30-foot high revetment have been picked up like pebbles and carried away by the high energy waves. Note the pool on the edge of doom. Undercurrent stabilizers have solved erosion problems and rebuilt beaches in the same places where core and government permitted dredging, groins, and revetments and seawalls have failed. They can save Flagler's Beach. Well, what about storms? Won't Flagler's nor'easters and hurricanes wash the sand away? No. In fact, where undercurrent stabilizers are used typically grow faster during storms and hurricanes. Waves from hurricanes could bring us more sand. The stabilizers aren't very attractive. Will they be visible for long? Undercurrent stabilizers are very low profile and begin covering themselves with sand almost immediately. Eventually they become buried deeper and deeper as the beach and dunes continue to grow deeper and wider. And anyway, could they be less attractive than what we have now? 
Do undercurrent stabilizers have any adverse effects? Undercurrent stabilizers have had only positive effects in the sea and on the shore. They promote rapid recovery of fish and bottom dwelling populations reduced by offshore dredging. Sand accumulates quickly, promoting beach width and elevation, and the formation of the dunes turtles love. Will this lady find a home on Flagler's Beach? How long do undercurrent stabilizers last? Undercurrent stabilizer installation is a one-time permanent solution, not the start of a costly long-term management program. This in itself saves billions of dollars being thrown away on repeated dredging, seawalls, and other failed methods promoted by the engineers and the Army Corps of Engineers. What do customers say about undercurrent stabilizer systems? Seeing the land as it is now is not as dramatic as when our cottage was about to fall into Lake Michigan. The impact of the system is far beyond the immediate span of the installation itself. We have gained about 75 to 100 feet of beach and 35 to 50 feet of foredune height. Neighbors have commented that our system has helped their beaches as well. What do the experts say about undercurrent stabilizer systems? All installations are consistent in showing shore protection coupled with beach growth. My confidence is that undercurrent stabilizers has risen to a level of professional opinion. The established ways of thinking must change among the regulators and scientists to incorporate this paradigm of shoreline processes. The system has performed as predicted. The shoreline has expanded, the beach has elevated, and the vegetation on the slope has been reestablished. An increase in the beach width has occurred over the entire installation site in the area immediately adjacent to the site north and south of the structures. I am convinced about the effectiveness of these systems. The soft arrangements are physically and environmentally superior to the hard protection and to beach renourishment. What are the other options? SaveFlagglersBeach.com Incorporated has researched other methods commonly used by the Corps and other government agencies including breakwaters, groins, seawalls, revetments, shore parallel sand tubes, and artificial reefs. These are all short-term attempts to solve a long-term problem. Extensive evidence shows that only undercurrent stabilizers protect the shore and restore the beach and dunes quickly and permanently. Let's review. Undercurrent stabilizers require no dredge sand during installation or at any time afterward. The system is a one-time permanent installation. The beaches and dunes they create continue to grow without maintenance or management. They regenerate the shoreline by imitating nature, not by combating it. They are turtle friendly. They are cost effective. So what are we asking for? A one mile demonstration project, a single mile along South A1A's most severely eroded shoreline to show how undercurrent stabilizers can halt erosion, rebuild the dunes to save A1A and to regenerate our natural beach. Your voice, your help, your action, your willingness to fight to save Flagler's Beach.